Two important quantities to feel comfortable using in calculations are the built-in potential and the depletion width. Let's talk about the built-in potential here, which you can then use to calculate depletion width. So here's the energy band diagram for a PN junction with induction band edge taking a step up at the junction and the height it goes up is the built-in potential times Q and the same for the valence band edge. The depletion width is the region in which there is space charge. So within these two outer dashed vertical lines there is a net charge. There's not charge neutrality and it's because there are fixed donor and acceptor ions in this region, which create an electric field and, and a distribution of, of non-zero charge. Let's begin with built-in potential, which, you know, it, since it's uh, associated with the location of the conduction band edge, we should be able to use equation 1.8.5 to calculate it. I do want to point this out too. So, so the width of the depletion region is a distance as you cross the junction. So the junction uh, interface is right here at x equals zero. Another quantity which will become important later is the depth of the depletion region that is going into the page. So let's uh, write out these most important equations in the book in order to find the built-in potential. If it's a difference between the you know, conduction band edge on the P side and the conduction band edge on the N side, then we really need to find the conduction band edge, which these important equations give to us in reference to the Fermi energy, the carrier concentration for electrons on the N side, this comes from equation 185. If you're on the N side, this, the electrons are the majority carrier, we already know what value N has. It's the doping density, so whatever density you dope to. So we can say N sub D is, is that expression. And on the P side, same thing. You know, you can go ahead and, and use equation 1.8.8 for the majority holes because you already know what value the hole concentration has. It's the doping concentration for acceptors. And also there's the, the equilibrium statement. I haven't been referring to it as the law of mass action, but that, that is what it is. It's the same law of mass action you study in, in your chemistry course. This is a very useful thing for us to know that, that n sub i squared, the intrinsic carrier concentration is n sub i, n sub i squared is the product of the electron concentration and the hole concentration in equilibrium. We can use that expression to find the minority carriers. That's usually the approach. You use 188 and 185 to find the majority carrier concentration, and then you use this to find the minority carrier concentration. On the P side, that would be the electrons. But it is true, no matter what, that these equations, 185 and 188, work for minority carriers too. If I look at the minority electron carriers on the P side, okay, it, e it equals n sub i squared, you know, which for silicon is 10 to the 10th, but also it's still equation 185. It's you know, still the intrinsic uh, density of states, n sub c times e to the minus conduction band edge minus e fermi, or the conduction band edge on the P side. P sub P is the, the whole concentration on the P side, which is the doping density. So those are the same. Put the, these two equations together. We will use them. First invert them, that is get them into logarithm form. And then let's do a little algebra to get this expression. E sub C on the P side minus E sub C on the N side. So I'm going to rewrite these two equations. I numbered them 1 and 2. I'm just going to write them again. I in inverted them, that is, now they're in logarithm form. So if you need to, just pause the video and make sure that these two equations are these two equations. You need to see that. Now that you have them, uh, all you have to do is isolate E sub C on P and N. So let's eliminate E sub F between these two expressions. Uh, easy enough to do, just add them together. Fermi energy goes away. So they're added together, and so now we have an expression for the conduction band edge on P side minus conduction band edge on N side. And it's a function of the doping densities. And this N sub I, which is always 10 to the 10th for silicon and the values for other materials. That is the built-in potential, so I'll make a note of that. We now have our expression. So you can solve for the built-in potential if you know the doping densities. In your reading, Section 4.2.2, a derivation was done for the depletion width, specifically for an abrupt junction, that is one where the donor doping suddenly stops and the acceptor doping suddenly starts. So read that section. I'm not going to repeat it here. 
Next time, we're going to do our own derivation, not for that, but for a linearly graded junction. That is one where the doping concentrations uh, change from acceptor to whole gradually. The expression that's derived in section 4.2.2, it's you know, the sum of x sub p, the you know, depletion region on the p side, plus minus x sub n, the depletion region on the n side, because remember, x sub n is a negative number. Then there's the expression for an abrupt junction. You read the derivation. I don't want to repeat it, but we'll do it for a different kind of a doping profile next time. If you know the built-in potential, you can then proceed to solve it. So write this down, this expression right now, um, because I want to talk to you about this constant epsilon sub s. That's an epsilon. That's not electric field. That's dielectric constant. Epsilon sub s is a product of primitive free space, epsilon naught, and the dielectric constant epsilon sub r. So uh, epsilon sub r then is a number that's like, you know, ranges from 1 to 20, typically, for most materials. It can be a lot larger for aeroelectric materials. Epsilon sub s then, is, I used the wrong term, epsilon sub s is the permittivity of the material. Epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space. And then epsilon sub r is, yeah, the relative dielectric constant, the relative, or sometimes called the relative permittivity. We'll use Ferris per centimeter as our units on epsilon naught. You're going to use these numbers a lot. For silicon, the dielectric constant is the 11.8. For silicon dioxide, which we'll also use a lot because silicon dioxide is the, the common insulating layer that is placed on top of silicon and uh, MOSFETs. The, the dielectric constant is 3.6 for silicon dioxide. Yeah, write those numbers down. Put them on the inside cover of your textbook. Put them someplace where you're going to look uh, quickly and easily and find it to be very convenient. Now, when you make a uh, PN junction, most frequently the, the doping levels are not the same on both sides. I've been emphasizing that N sub A and N sub D are not the same number. Typically, one of them is much, much larger than the other one. Uh, and that's what you call a one-sided junction. In the event that it's the, the P side, the N sub A, the acceptor doping that's large, you call it a P plus N junction. So that you're going to see this terminology. So you want to recognize right away P plus N junction means a junction where the P material, P type material is heavily doped. Then in that case, the depletion region is mostly in the N type. So heavy doping causes the depletion region to be small in that material. Let me go back to a picture. In this particular case, it's clear that the n-type material has heavier doping because its depletion region is smaller than the p-type material. The p-type material had heavier doping than the, the, the depletion region for the p-type material would be smaller. And you can argue it from charge neutrality. When you read again section 4.2.1 this time, charge neutrality condition is, is employed. If all you have in the depletion region is acceptor and donor ions, the charge contained on the N side in the depletion region should equal the amount of charge contained in the P side in the depletion region. And so this is true. N sub A times X sub P the width times the area of the depletion region equals n sub d times x sub n, the width, times the area of the depletion region. The area cancels out, and that's where this expression comes from. Read about in section 421. And if the heavy doping is on the n side, you call it an n plus p junction. And the opposite is the case then, right? n sub d is much larger, and consequently the p side has the larger depletion region. We'll stop with that. We're going to do an example problem soon, and we're also then going to do a linearly graded junction.